I got the book called The Millionaire Fastlane thanks to a lot of subscribers who recommended it in the comment section. How's it going everybody? This is Beat the Bush. If you guys are interested in getting a free audiobook, maybe even this particular book because I think it's actually really good, you can check out my referral link down in the video description below and you can help support this channel. So for the review of this book, I'm really only gonna paraphrase it. I'm not gonna quote it or anything, but I wanna get to the gist of it so you know what to expect when you read the book. When you read the title, it says Millionaire Fastlane. So for me, I'm like, okay, it's about being a millionaire. It's probably a finance book, but I don't know what it is trying to say inside. What's the core gist of it? So here it is. It talks about not being one millionaire. It talks about being a 5 million, 10 million, 60 millionaire. The traditional way that a lot of finance gurus would tell you to become a millionaire, that anyone can become a millionaire, is to frugally spend and then you can uh, sock away a whole bunch of investments as you work. And then maybe when you're 65, yeah, maybe you're gonna get like one and a half million, two million dollars in the bank, and then you can comfortably retire, hopefully. This book essentially tosses out all that and makes a case for being an entrepreneur. This book essentially casts away all types of jobs where you're essentially working for someone for a salary and then going the entrepreneur route. Now, not all jobs are the same. Sometimes you might be a basketball player, movie star or something, and essentially, yeah, you are working for time, except you're working for a really large amount of it. So for some of these people that works for a really large salary, it's a little bit different there, and you cannot actually expect to become a basketball player, movie star, or the like. It does highlight, though, some of these movie stars and basketball players, they can essentially spend as much as they take in. So as soon as they're not making that kind of like $10 million income every single year, they immediately go bankrupt right after. So they do not have a sound cash flow going on. Now going the entrepreneur route, it's not always the same. Sometimes you might be having a business of your own and it's just kind of mass because you can call yourself a business owner. However, you still have to put in a certain amount of time in order to gain a certain amount of money. For example, a freelancer who sells their services, you can essentially think, yeah, you're running a little business over here, so you're a small business owner. However, you're trading your time for some services, some development services or whatnot. What this book highlights is that when you sell your time for money, it's not very scalable. And I've repeated this on this channel as well before. So when you go the entrepreneur route, you have to differentiate. What separates it from being a scalable business where essentially you don't have to tend to it all that much and then it can multiply itself versus a business where you have to keep on pouring hours and hours into it in order to get incremental income coming back out. So this book concentrates on becoming a millionaire while you're still young versus the typical job thing where you sock away money in your 401k, et cetera, et cetera. To do this in about five to 10 years or so, you need to make roughly $1 million a year to get to 5 million, right? So when you think about this, I think this book really hits it home for me. When I uh, listen to it, I'm like, yeah, this is very interesting. I wanna keep on listening to it. If you want to make a million dollars a year, you can't work for someone, period. So this should hit you very hard right now as it did for me because when you're at a certain job, you're essentially wasting your time. You are not putting the time into this $1 million a year endeavor. You're wasting all this time at your job. You're tiring yourself out and what you're left with is a few measly hours per week in order to work on what you really want to work on and most people do not even put in these few hours a week in their entrepreneur efforts. Therefore, when you work for a job, you're setting yourself up to not become rich, to not ever attain the $5 million or more mark. Now I wanna say this book is pretty honest because it hits some points in saying that, yes, this book itself is an entrepreneur effort because once they put in like a thousand hours or something writing that book, they're essentially gonna get residual income for a really, really long time. And every single time he promotes this book, he's essentially gonna get tens of thousands of dollars for that single promotion in terms of profits. And it's only gonna take him a few hours. So when you think about it, wow, that's how you make millions. Just use a few hours to make tens of thousands of dollars. This is crazy, right? I feel like the author left something very important out right at the very beginning of the book, which is this book is not for everyone. For a person to succeed in the fast lane, I feel like that person needs to have enough grit, enough ambition, and enough ability to complete the task. If it's as good as it seems, well, everyone is just gonna go, okay, I'm gonna quit my job and you know just jump right into it. Not everyone is gonna be brave enough to take the leap of faith and just essentially quit 
and not have any money to back them up for living expenses. So why was this left out? Because if it spelled it out, let's say on the preface or something or right on the cover, the person reading it right away will go, you know what? Maybe I don't have enough ambition to do this. I've never been that type of person. So therefore they're not going to buy the book. So therein lies the conflict of interest here because the author wants to sell as many books as possible. Therefore, who that book is for is left out conveniently. Now, maybe the author truly thinks that anyone can actually be a multimillionaire. That's the difference of views. And to me, I do not think everyone can. And in reality, not everyone can become a millionaire and this will never happen actually. The book talks about the slow lane and fast lane. Fast lane is essentially five millionaire while you're young. Slow lane is essentially people working jobs and they're doing their savings, pouring money into their 401ks. They probably went to college, have a professional degree, and they need to let their investments simmer for essentially 40 years. The book keeps on making a case that this is way too slow. And I personally think, yeah, it is kind of slow. Uh, letting things compound at 8%. Yeah, you know, after 30 years or so, you're gonna have millions, sure. It also talks about the slow lane where, you know, even a good salary increase. I personally did this myself where I jumped from one job to another. And sometimes I even got a salary increase of up to 25% for every single jump. Now this pales in comparison to being an entrepreneur because one year you might be making $10,000. The next year you might be making $100,000. So tenfold increase. It keeps on saying that at a job, you'll never ever get a tenfold increase in salary. And this is very, very true. It talks about the slow way of getting rich. You essentially need to save a lot. Therefore, you end up being a very frugal type of person like I am. You essentially minimize your standard of living. Therefore, you're sort of suppressing all of this. You're not living life to the fullest. You can't you know, buy things that you want. The contrast to this is in the fast lane, you might be an entrepreneur and if, and only if, you make some success in it. Let's say you went from making $100,000 a year to $400,000 a year then, well, of course, then you're not going to increase your expenses from $100,000 to $400,000. Maybe your expenses was only $30,000 and then you'll increase it a little bit. Maybe you'll increase it to $100,000. So if your expenses as an entrepreneur is just trailing behind what you actually make, then you can actually increase your lifestyle. You can inflate your lifestyle to a very luxurious state. Spending $100,000 on living costs is pretty darn luxurious. So this book really, really emphasized not trading your time for money. You place yourself in a position to make millions. It's not guaranteed that you will, but at least when you place yourself there, you have a chance of making millions. When you place yourself at a job, you will not make millions. This is not something that this book told me and I'm like, oh my gosh, I cannot believe this. This is something I sort of believed years ago. And then whatever job that you're at, you start to think, oh my gosh, I am trading my per hourly wages uh, for something that's not scalable. So every single hour that you go in, okay, you get like $50, let's say. That's what you get. You're not going to get, you know, suddenly 10 times that ever. To make millions, this book says you need to generate systems that makes you money while you sleep. These are the pursuits that will take a lot of initial effort to get it up and going. However, if you design the business well, it will essentially run itself and it'll require very little upkeep. Afterwards, this becomes a money-making machine and then you just let it run and then it'll churn out money for you. For example, things that are scalable, a website designed properly that does not require the blogger or something to keep on updating unless you hire people to update the blog for you. You can write a book like this book I'm reviewing right now, but most people cannot write a book while they're working. Why? Because they don't have enough time. People don't have enough time. Essentially, when you are uh, at a job, you are essentially nulled out on all your free time. You can also make your own business, which I do not have that much experience in. Otherwise, you know, I'd start my own business as well. And one of the things that can make you money while you sleep is YouTube. Yes, this YouTube channel does make me money while I sleep. However, I don't think it's as good as everyone thinks it is. It's not completely, completely passive. If you have a YouTube channel and you're the sole person that makes videos like myself, you essentially have to keep on updating. You have to keep on uploading fresh videos. Otherwise your channel will become stagnant and no one would come to your channel anymore and it'll just taper off. Therefore YouTube could be passive if you build it into a business where you have people working for you and they're essentially making videos for you. But not so much as the way I'm doing it right now because I need to be here 
if let's say I get hurt, I'm in the hospital for like a year or something. Well, I'm pretty sure uh, the viewership is going to go down. It's not going to go up. Also, I like to mention that promoting Audible at the beginning of this video is also not purely in the fast lane. Why do I say this? Because every single time I promote it, I have to keep on promoting it in order to uh, have people sign up. If I stop promoting it, well, the signups kind of taper off a little bit, just like YouTube does. When I listen to the book, some of the errors that I see is that it always likes to cherry pick the worst case scenarios. It seems to really dislike dollar cost averaging and long-term investing. It kept on quoting things like the dot-com crash and the housing market bubble where your asset value, whatever investments that you have, essentially plummeted like 40, 50% even. And it makes it seem being an entrepreneur does not have its own risk as well. Now, if you're psychologically prepared to not sell right at the bottom, then you can weather it out and you essentially will not be losing that 60%. It always does come back. The book never talks about this and sort of paints a really, really grim picture for people trying to get rich on the slow lane. It also talks about inflation saying, oh yeah, you know, 30 years later, your money is essentially gonna be worth half as much. However, if you look at the investment principles, it takes into account inflation. Essentially, this book promotes not going to college at all, mainly because of the huge student loan debt that you would get. And even with that degree, you're essentially signing up for a job, not the entrepreneur route where you can make millions. It essentially thinks that 8% compounded annual gains it's too slow. You can't be a multimillionaire with 8% gains. It talks about jobs are not stable. There's no loyalty here from your company to you. It's always sort of like an image that, yes, you know, they want to take care of their employees. They have these functions going on. But my experience corresponds with the book thinks is that, you know, when push comes to shove, whenever there's a recession, whenever something bad go on, you know, people working for a company for 15 years in a row, they're very, very loyal. Well, you know, they get laid off anyway. On top of this, even when there's one quarter of a little less profit than before, they're not even making a loss or anything, just a little bit less profit, they're essentially gonna start downsizing already, which means layoffs. If you're the typical American, you essentially cannot stay afloat for several months, let alone six months or one year. As soon as you lose your job, you are hosed. So in the end, I think this book is very entertaining. However, there are some points here and there that repeats the same ideas over and over again. Even with those setbacks, I do think it's a good book. It sort of vitalizes you and just kind of gets you pumped up for you know trying to quit your job. Of course, if you really think about it, I personally did it in a safe way where I essentially had enough uh, side income flowing in to meet my expenses. Some people that go to entrepreneur route, well, they are eating ramen for like a year in a row. They're spending very, very lean in order to get in into the business as soon as they can. I did it the super slow way because I did go to college after all. I did work in the industry for many, many years, so I know exactly what they're talking about. I think I'm not really explaining every single detail of the book, and I think the book is still worth a listen through Audible. If you're interested in getting this book, I have my referral link down in the video description below where you can get a free audiobook and listen to this for free just like I did. There's basically no cheaper way to get this book because you can go on eBay, look for it. It's like $10, $14 or something. Same thing on Amazon, even if you buy it used. So this is worth that much and you can help benefit this channel if you get it through my Audible link down in the video description below. So thanks for watching this video. Don't forget to push that subscribe button and ring that bell icon for notifications. Thanks for watching.